SPN question in year 2019, so we go through the question together. A particle moves along a straight line such that its velocity is given by v equals to t cubed minus 4t squared plus 3. Okay, firstly, it's a cubic equation because t to the power of 3. And secondly, the graph do not have any v intercept. It means that the initial velocity here, it will be 0. So when you want to draw your graph, you have to start from 0 after passing through fixed point O. Find the initial acceleration of the particle. You are advised to find out the equation for displacement and the acceleration. Can you still remember how to find the acceleration from the velocity? Differentiate. Differentiate because acceleration is the gradient. 3t squared minus 8t plus 3. Then, if you want to get the displacement, we integrate it t to the power of 4 over 4 minus 4t cubed over 3 plus 3t squared over 2, the a intercept, which is the 3. That gives you the initial accelerations. When the a is positive, then your graph should be up and then down and then up. You can see the whole thing is moving up. So if negative, it will be down and then up and then down. So the graph will be up, down, up. One mark will be given to the equation of acceleration. And one mark for the initial acceleration, which is 3. Acceleration is less than 6. Then what is the time interval? Your first concept you should refer here is a is less than 6. Our a is 3t squared minus 8t plus 3. Just write it down. 3t squared minus 8t plus 3 less than 6. And you know that if you want to solve it, you have to get the general form first. So we move the 6 to the other side. So 3 minus 6, it becomes negative 3. Then we can factorize it already. I believe that you will get negative 1 over 3 and positive 3. And then you draw the smiley face. And then the two value will be negative 1 over 3 and also positive 3. And because the, the sign here is less than 0, we refer to the upper side or lower side? Upper side lower. Lower, lower side here. So your time is in between 3 and negative 1 over 3. So we write down the sign here, less than, less than. Can you accept this as your final answer? Equation? No. Ye yes. No. Why? Negative time. Negative. Time cannot be negative. So that's why we had to move forward a bit to the front until the value which is not negative and then we stop at zero. Time can be zero, right? Time cannot be negative only. So once you move in front, you have to be careful a bit. This zero is actually included in the range of time, right? So that's why we cannot write it as less, but we have to write as less or equal. So that is our answer. 0 is less equal t is less than 3. One mark when you factorize it. One mark when you f get the final answer. 0 less equal t and then less than 3. The time in second when the particle stop instantaneously. So we don't care about the terms instantaneously. It actually want to tell you it stop at that moment only, for that very short moment. After that, it moves again. So the, the concept here is stop at race, turn to the left, turn to the right. Ah, that is the keyword that you should know that you have to refer to velocity equals to zero, which is t cubed minus 4t squared plus 3t, we let it equals to zero. Once you write this equation, you get one mark already. It shows that you understand that is a concept of stop let it equal to 0. Then we factorize it, factorize the t first. So once you factorize the t, you still have t squared minus 4t plus 3 inside the bracket, right? Uh, then baru we factorize that t squared minus 4t plus 3. You will get t minus 1, t minus 3. So here we have 3, you know, 1 is t, 1 is t minus 1. t is actually 3, 3 minus 0 in front. You have to understand that. We don't need to write down 0. So t minus 3. So with this, we have three possible values. One is 0, one is 1, and one is 3. So can you please tell me why I reject the 0? 
because zero is the starting time. Uh, that is the first point when the particle is at rest. You got three value. Why? Because you got three point, right? One point, two point, and three point. So this three point is the moment that the particle stops. The particle will stop at one second and the third second. Second mark here. You want to find the total distance. You know that total distance means you want to find the total area which is under the graph. Travel by the particle until the particle reaches Turn to the fixed point O for the second time. What is the concept we apply when the particle return to the fixed point O? Displacement is zero. Yes, correct. We let the displacement equals to zero. So we factorize the t square first. So we still have t square over 4 minus 4t over 3 plus 3 over 2. I believe that you will get the value. The first one, of course, is zero. Lah. And the second one will be 1.613. And the third value will be 3.721. 1.613. So which means when the particle travel until this point, then it will it will pass through the origin for the first time. Then after that, when the time reach 3.721 uh, that is the time that the particle passed through the origin again for the second time so can you see that the whole area that you want to find here is the total distance traveled by the particle when it returned to the fixed point so we integrate one by one so you can see the first area we have to integrate from 0 until 1 we substitute the 0 1 inside you will get 5 over 12 and then after that, the second part, we substitute the 1 until 3 inside. You will get negative 2 and 2 over 3. Be reminded that this negative only represent stay at the left hand side. Lastly, we have to integrate from 3 until 3.721. So we get 2.252. With that, we can get our total distance, which is 5 over 12 plus 2 and 2 over 3 plus 2.252 then we get our final answer 5.335 meter okay if you're using this method first mark will be given once you manage to get the time 3.712 okay second mark will be given once you integrate it correctly with the correct range here third mark will be you get all the value correct and then you plus it Lastly will be your final answer, 5.335. Displacement here. Share the one mark with the time. You know why they share? Because some people, they want to use this method, but they did not manage to find the time 3.721. So that's why after that, everything is wrong. That is the reason why if the student cannot get the time correctly, if they are using this method, so the one mark still can be given to the equation of the displacement. Wow, so hard though. Yeah, this, so method, tough, eh? this method is quite complicated. It might be easier if you draw out. Imagine this one is the starting point. It moves toward the right-hand side until one second, then it will stop. Then after that, it will turn to left already. If the particle moves to the right-hand side until the first second. Okay? Then after that, it will move to the left-hand side until the third second, then it will stop and then start moving to the right again. From the starting point, move to the right hand side for the first second, then stop and then turn to left and move until the third second is stop again. Then starting to move to the right hand side again. It will pass through again the origin for the second time. This is the first time the particle stay at point O. This is the first time the particle return to the point O. This one, actually, it will give you the time of 1.613 for the particle return to the origin for the second time, which gives you the time of 3.721 seconds. But if you're using this method, actually, it's not important for you to know what is the time it returned to the origin because we can actually find the displacement, right? So we find the first displacement for the, for the particle moving to the right first. So we substitute the 1 inside the equation for the displacement. You will get the first displacement, which is 5. First displacement, yang the particle move to the right, it will give you 5 over 12. So when the particle move backward until it reach the starting point, 
it will pass through again another 5 over 12 meter. So now we find the second displacement, which is 3 seconds. We put a 3 in. It will give you 9 over 4. That will give you the displacement of 9 over 4 here. Then the distance traveled by the particle definitely will be the same, which is 9 over 4 also, for it to return to the starting point for the second time. So what is the total distance here? 5 over 12 plus 5 over 12 plus 9 over 4 plus 9 over 4, which gives you 5 and 1 over 3. So if you count it, it will give you 5.33333. So if you compare to the answer just now, 5.335, a slightly different a little bit, but honestly, this answer is more accurate. The one mark can supposedly given to the equation for the displacement. The second mark will be given either you find the displacement for the time is 1 or the time is 3. Third mark is when you get the value already and then you plus it. Then the fourth mark will be the answer, total distance. Don't you feel this method is much easier compared to the graph? Way easier. Yeah, way true. Easy easy to course, understand. Of course, this method, it will be easier to understand because of the condition return to the origin. So it's not every time the graph method will be difficult. It depends on the conditions. So that's why it's important for you to know both methods.